So, yeah, my diet is not what one would call the normal American standardized diet based upon the old food pyramid. This is not one, this is not a eating, an eating pattern that uh, my doctor recommends even, or most doctors that are over 40, 50, 60 years old that haven't had a chance to catch up with what I think are some new and better ideas on eating. Hey gang, welcome back to Mark's 60 plus fitness journey. Now, first and foremost, before we get into this, I want to say that I am not a doctor. I am not a nutritionist. Not even sure what a nutritionist is these days. And I am only qualified to talk about my diet and how it's affected me. But I am gonna share with you my diet and how I feel on said diet and how I have felt on other types of eating patterns. So first things first, um, starting off this morning, it's about 717. I've been up for about an hour. The first thing I do when I get up is, well, the second thing, imagine the first, but the second thing is I get me some coffee. Usually, Mrs. 60 Plus Fitness is kind enough to have the coffee made. Have coffee with butter in it. That's right, coffee with butter in it. So you hear that, you're probably gonna go, wait a minute, this sounds awfully like ketogenic or at least low carb. Well, it's definitely very, very close to that. So, I'll continue with the morning eating, and then I'll explain a little bit more about why I'm going down this path. So I have my coffee, then I'll go for a walk, come back, and I'll have like meal one. We call it breakfast. We're gonna break a fast, so it really is a breakfast. And, uh, and normally that is four eggs. Four, the higher quality the eggs, the better, but four. I like to have legit, range free or you know what is it called chickens that are on the range <laughs> organic eggs but they're expensive but that's that's what i look for four eggs and some cottage cheese mixed in there and a little salt a little pepper and maybe some texas peat that's that's my breakfast and, and that is set in stone the eating patterns for the rest of the day, they are gonna be higher fat, lower carbs, moderate protein, although I probably go a little bit higher on the moderate protein, moderate protein with a capital M. And that's what I've been doing. And this is, there's, there's really two reasons for this. Now you may remember uh, the, I've, I've talked about this in several videos. The end of December of 2021, I think <laughs> it was a couple years ago. I had a and what I thought was uh, vertigo, and it turns out it was it was diagnosed as vestibular neuritis. So it was a problem with my ear, the nerve between the ear and the brain. I might. I was completely discombobulated, couldn't walk for weeks, literally couldn't walk. I mean, I wasn't paralyzed, but my balance was such I couldn't walk, had to relearn to walk. And uh, that, I mean, up until just recently has been sticking with me to uh, varying degrees of seriousness for a while. <clears throat> so I, I, I started thinking about this as I heard somebody say, well, may, there, maybe there's an inflammation problem. You know, that's a big, where, what's inflamed. You know, it could be the nerves or something that is inflamed by something you eat. So is there anything you eat every single day and probably in a larger portion than most folks? And that, the answer was yes, I, eat oat, I ate oatmeal every day and I ate a lot of oatmeal. I love oatmeal. That was my, that was what was in, in, in lieu of my eggs in the morning, coffee, walk, oatmeal. So I took the oatmeal out and started replacing uh, most of my carbs, even the good complex carbs, with 
protein and fat. And in essence, what I've, what I've done is replaced the carbs energy source with fat energy source using the ketogenic approach. And I've done this before. I've been on a ketogenic diet before and I felt fine on it. At the time, I just got off of it because I feel, felt like I needed to have more carbs to build more muscle. This was a few years ago. And that was all good. And when I transitioned from keto to higher carb then, felt great. But this particular time, about, uh, well, it'd be two years ago, I guess, in, in December. I hope my time frames are right. But um, I wanted to make sure that what I was eating wasn't causing my, my inner ear problem, my balance problem, and another but seemingly unrelated problem that happened at the exact same time is my um, liver enzymes, A ALT and AST, those two skyrocketed to these ridiculously high levels, according to my doctor, and they were high. Their normal ranges were like 30, 40. My, these were in the 900, 800 range. So the, the thought was I had a virus. All this stuff's going on in my head. And I said, I don't know what's going on. So basically I went back to my ketogenic approach, which is what I'm doing, which drives the missus crazy because she never knows what I'm doing. But I've been doing this for a while now. And um, of course, you know, the big scare, the, thing, the big thing that people are afraid of is the indoctrination that we've had over the years that any saturated fat is going to immediately travel right to your arteries and fill it up with cholesterol. Now, I will reiterate here, I am not a doctor. I will not uh, encourage you to jump onto the ketogenic wagon or the carnivore wagon or any kind of diet until you talk to your, visit, your physician or your doctor. But I would say have an open mind and look into some of these other options like the ketogenic diet and you know research some of the theories behind why some of this is good, why, why cholesterol is not your enemy, why statins are not your friend, and all the other various and sundry things that play into uh, things like maybe having heart disease, things like that. Um, I will say this, that I believe inflammation, bodily inflammation is what causes all of our maladies. And any disease we have is going to be, or most diseases are going to be inflammation based. So including heart disease. So what I'm going to do is find a diet, which I think I have found, ketogenic, high fat, low carb eating pattern that lowers my inflammation. I, I, I just feel better. The last four or five weeks, I have actually felt better. I have, I have not had the typical head wooziness, balance, dizziness issues that were associated with my vestibular neuritis that I've had for almost two years. It's way less, way, way less since I stopped eating, for example, uh, oatmeal in the morning and most of the carbs throughout the day and replaced it with, with fat. And uh, I feel better. Now, the downside to that is I was a little grumpy not having the carbs, it's a little difficult to come off carbs. So the missus said, hey, you're being a little bit of a grumpy ass here, so tread lightly until you get, get used to this. Other than that, I think this has done me great. Um, now I give you the breakfast that I normally eat, and that, kind of, like I said, it kind of transitions into lunch, dinner, and it's not eggs the rest of the day, but uh, you know, like for, I have, after breakfast, I'll have a pre-lunch, I call it. It's a, it's a snack. It's usually a roll-up of uh, turkey, sliced turkey and um, cheese. It could be provolone cheese or something like that rolled up. And then I'll carry a snack with me to the gym, which is usually some real peanut butter with just peanut butter in it, not palm oil and sugar, with some protein powder, iso-pure protein powder with no carbs in it. Mix that up. And, <laughs> Maybe even put a little coconut oil in it and 
uh, carry it in a little chilled pouch and when I get ready to eat it after my workout, it's kind of like a nice, nice, nice little gelato uh, feel to it. Not sweet, but uh, it is filling. And uh, for lunch, I might have ground turkey or ground beef. And then uh, after, you know, a pre-dinner pre snack that uh, is going to involve you know, some sort of cheese thing, generally speaking. It could be cottage cheese and peanut butter. Um, and then for dinner, you know, a good, one of our favorite options is salmon in the, in the evening with some broccoli and onions and things like that. Um, it's, very do, it's very doable for me. I, I like it, and uh, the thing is, this is part of the key. Uh, I don't count calories. I literally do not count calories. I do not count protein. If I do any counting at all or tracking at all, it may be protein. I want to make sure I get over 150 grams of protein, closer to 200. And I do keep an eye on carbs. I want to keep my carb count under 20 if possible, but 30 is more realistic for me now. Um, and. Uh, that's it. I mean, I, I don't really put a lot of effort into this all day long other than constantly going to the store. Hold on one second. That was my mama calling. <laughs> Every day we uh, chat somewhere between 7, 7.30. And uh, she's got another big heart procedure coming up here next week. So I'm trying to keep her, keep her calm. But... Uh, I kind of lost my train of thought there, but other than just making sure you know, I have enough eggs in the house and uh, the stuff that I eat, it's not really a challenge. I like to eat this way. If we go out to if we go out to eat, I don't have a problem getting a salad with salmon in it and just oil and vinegar as a dressing, that kind of thing. But that's basically my diet, and um, I will if there's enough interest actually go through a full day of eating, actually picturing it, showing you what I do. And that's it. I, there's not going to be a whole lot of recipe direction in it because I don't really use that. There's not going to be a whole lot of measuring <laughs> teaspoons, cups, that kind of stuff. I don't do a lot of that stuff. I just put stuff in. I know it, it's visual. I don't count calories, as I said. Um, but, you know, I'd be glad to do a full day of eating for you just to show you exactly what it is that I'm, that I'm eating. But the bottom line is, right now, it's a ketogenic, um, high fat, which is the key to the ketogenic, ketogenic diet. It's high fat, moderate protein, low carbs. What makes this work is transitioning from carbs as fuel to fat as fuel. And the only concern I have with this is, will I be able to keep muscle mass and, and in, actually hopefully improve increase my muscle mass and excuse me but um the only thing i've noticed really a slight decrease in strength and i think that's because i, I lost weight i lost about nine ten pounds and uh the muscle mass looks normal it looks the same matter of fact, matter of fact it looks better when you lose a little bit of flab but uh you know, I'm, I'm going to stick with it. I think it works great. You know, there's a lot of flack. I get a lot of flack. I've got some, uh, I've got a, uh, a cardiac intensivist, a pediatric cardiac intensivist brother-in-law that I'm certain would not agree with this. And I know for a fact my doctor does not agree with this. And uh, I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there selling statins that wouldn't agree with this. That's kind of poking the bear there. But anyway, that's what I eat. That's what I do. And uh, I, I do feel less lethargic now after I've been on it for a while. There's a little phase there where it's kind of hard to get off the carbs and get the fat kicking in. But, um, you know, I take fewer naps since I started this, for example, now that you mention it or now that I think about it. But anyway, I know this is going to stir the pot. A lot of you folks are going to go, oh, man, that's, 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 that's a bunch of booze, you know. And some of you are going to agree with me because you've, you've seen it. Subjective evidence on your part. But I just wanted to let you know, I want to share what I'm doing. I'm not advocating this. I'm sharing what I do. 
And I invite you to go out and do some research on this. Look at Low Carb Down Under. There's a, there's a uh, I think it's an organization in Australia called Low Carb Down Under. And there are a lot of uh, doctors, there's a lot of doctors locally here in uh, Norfolk, Virginia that base their practice on this ketogenic approach. Anti-inflammatory anti medicine, I guess you'd call it. But you know, go out there and do your research. Check it out. But camera overheated. So in just a little bit, I'm gonna go out and have those aforementioned eggs at my breakfast and continue on with my eating patterns. So anyway, let me know what you think about this, what you'd like to hear more about about this. And if you think about it, tell us about your diet and why why you believe in your diet, <laughs> why you do what you do, why you eat what you eat. All right, that's all I've got for today. And after this, I think Howard and I are going in for a back and bicep day, maybe even carry a camera. We'll see. It is rainy and gross, but I kind of like these days every so often. All right, so with that, I'll say, till next time, go get them. Mark out.